Hey guys, Rhino here. Welcome back to Formula 2 here for round 7 of the 2021 season here at Spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. A track which in the past has been a very good hunting ground for this man we're looking at right here, Artem Markolov. He started the season very well in the HWA. He's dropped off a little bit as of late and he's going to need a good result because he won here last time over here in Formula 2 and he needs to pull out a result similar to that today to get himself back in that title picture. With things being so close, so many different winners over these seven races so far, it's still way too soon to pick out any title favourites. And now then, onto the formation lap. We're looking now at the starting grid, and it's Luca Giotto who takes pole position, and the four points that go with it, and completing the front row is Marcus Armstrong in the lead of the ARTs. Artem Markov has a good qualifying for the first time in three races to start P3, ahead of Tadisuke Mikina, who by far has his best qualifying of the season. Dan Tictum and Jack Aiken complete an all Williams backed row three. With the other MP, Felipe Djokovic dying from P7 and Guan Yu Zhou lead Uni Virtual OC from P8. Gilherme Samaya in the second of the Campos and Jamie Andrewvle in the lead of the Carlin round off the top ten. And just missing out on a place inside the top ten was Marino Sato with a very encouraging lap in the Trident and completing an all Japanese and Honda backed row six with Yuki Tsunoda in the second of the Carlins. Carl Marla, who's shown pace as of late, going to manage 13th place in qualifying, and he starts alongside the other HWA, Giuliano Alesi. So guys, Trakin starts 14 places behind his teammate in P15, and starts alongside the other ART, Christy Lungard, who also starts 14 places behind his teammate. Sean Glare once, himself, once again finds himself in the lower reaches of the midfield, like from P17, ahead of the lead prime of Robert Schwarzman, who can only manage 18th place. Roy Nassani starts from 19th and 2nd of the Tridents, with Pedro Pique leads Chiruz only from P20. And completing the back row of the grid, we have Max Gunter, who was on a little bit of a format of late at Italy and Silverstone. And the back row of the grid, in the final place once again, is Louis Delatraz, who once again just couldn't manage to get a lap together in qualifying. And then for this race, we're following on board with the second place of the MP cars, the first time this season, I'm pretty sure, P7 here, Felipe Djokovic. He's shown good pace so far this season. Keeps himself in the title picture with his consistency, but now coming to the five red lights for the start of the feature race here in Belgium. Lights out, on the way they go. Looks like a pretty even start there from the front row. Got him, he's got the inside line. He's easily clear though of Armstrong down into turn one. He goes defensively there from Markov and Mikino behind. And Giotto has already got a car length or two clear into turn one. And then side by side, you got Mickey. He managed to put himself back in front, showing now why Honda put his face in to bring him back from Super Formula this year to, Formula this year to once again race in Formula 2. And up now into the podium place, but Marco's not going to take that one lying down. You can have two race wins on his belt already. He's not quite gone. Way playing with some bad luck and some bad strategy, strategy calls, but now they're down the end of the camera straight now. Into the next chicane, and Marco just has to stay behind the kid now for the time being. Those MP cars seem to be pretty speedy in a straight line. Not so good through the corners they've seen so far this season, but Djokovic especially has been managed to gain the pace out of that car so far as the season has progressed. And now looking back through the remaining order of the top 10, we've got Gilham Samai still looking to build on some form. Up there, up there in P7, he took pole back at Silverstone, but the race didn't quite go to plan. We're looking to try and build now on that momentum. Now we've got Djokovic all over the back now of Guan Yu Zhou coming into Pilmo. He's going to send one to the inside line of the Chinese driver. Catch him napping there. Brilliant move there from Djokovic. Fearless move from the Brazilian. Send one there to the inside line in such a dangerous corner anyway to go through on your own, let alone going side by side. Now already onto the back then of Gilherme Samaya. Going to be a bit of national pride at stake here. Two Brazilians going at it. And last time we had a Formula 2 champion, it was Sergio Sete Camara. In the Dams team, he made his way up to Formula 1, racing currently for Alpha Tari, part of the Red Bull Junior programme. And he's going to, uh, one of these two is going to want to look to make it, make their way up and be the next Brazilian and challenge Samaya on the grid, possibly even next season. Now, that's right, it's like, it's like Drogovic here losing a little bit of pace, maybe going for a bit more of a higher drag setup than what his teammate's gone for, losing a little bit of pace there in the dirty air as well. Because even with these cars having a lot less aero than what the F1 cars do, they will still be dirty air affecting these cars, but they can definitely follow a lot closer and a lot easier with having less aero overall. Now they're around the final corner, completely in the first lap, 2 minutes, 2.5 laps time there. From Luca Gallo, it's still going to be pretty pretty long laps in terms of time as well. Now they're on to lap, at the end of lap 3, still in the same position here for Philippe Hedricovic, still in P8 here, training chase down still after Gilhamo Samai with Dan Tatum up the road in P6. We've got Guan Yu and Druva still riding off the top 10. And now they're going defensive there is Gilhamo Samaya. 
Jose is very defensively there. Two things are like, there's nothing here really that uh, Djokovic can do, especially being that far back. Now, can you get a good run though out of the corner? You can be around the run now down into turn one because DRS will not be activated. And now into lap three and four of the race. And this is the first DRS end of the lap, but coming down into turn one, not quite close enough there to make a move on his fellow compatriot. But with Djokovic now starting to get held up here a little bit by Gil Hamis, they might still managing to pull away a little bit from the show behind, so. The Chinese driver not finding the ultimate race pace, even, even with these two battling, you think that him and Derufla and their cube cars behind would be catching up. Now in Sochi now, can Djokovic get a run here, coming down the Camo straight. Getting a big run here though on, on his fellow Brazilian, going to make the move now, now into P7, making an easy move state there with the DRS as well. And that low drag state up there, Campo saying to go for his purple, purple sector one as well there for Djokovic, which isn't really surprised if you get a DRS slow stream and an out slow stream that he was getting as well from Samaya. That's what now into P7. Try to chase down now after Dan Tatum, and then you've got Jack Aiken up in front. And Campos don't really have a great reliability record so far this season. I think they've retired for more races collectively than they finish, so might be, might be another free place to grab there later on in the race as things go on. But on to the end of lap five now, because it's time to play now for the one and only pit stop of the race. Everyone's here starting on the softer command of tyres, because you get to choose whichever command you want, but no one really fancying the alternative strategy. And now then Djokovic closing a lot there into the pit lane on Dante I'm taking a little bit careful, but once again, when you're in a title fight, if you lop your front wing off, and what I think, honestly, it's probably the most awkward pit entry. You've got walls either side, so one mistake, and that will be a front wing change. And when you got and you're five laps into the race, a front wing change, with being a lot less personal on the cars as well, would pretty much put you in the back of the grid once all the pit stops play out. And then got pit box here near towards the end here for the MP driver. Uh, going to be a set now then of the, uh, the medium tyres here for Djokovic. He's going to go for that Q-Cars. He almost stalls it though when he gets hold up. No, it's been such a good pit stop. It was so good from the team, but he stalled it when the car was dropped back down onto the wheels. Now, where's he going to come back out now? Back out onto the track. Going to lose it quite a few places by the looks of it. It's going to come down behind one of the trials behind one of the car lids as well. All the places he just gained. He was in the net P6, I believe, before he came to the pit lane. Probably going to be somewhere around 10th or 11th now. He's got a lot of ground yet to make up. We've got a few cars further behind him, and even earlier than for their pit stops. You've got the likes here of the Cherus cars, Eilat, Schwarzman as well. Made their pit stops even a lap earlier, trying to get an undercut on the cars around them, trying to gain some places back. Because you've got Christian Lungard way down the order in qualifying in P15 or so. But up front, you've got Marcus Armstrong now leading the way. Ahead then of Tadesuke Mikino. who I'm pretty sure might be getting a nosebleed is that high up the order. I haven't seen him this far up the order in a very long time. Which means the last time he was back in Formula 2, he's won a race before. He won for Russian time which then became Univirtual OC at Italy in Monza a couple of years ago. So he knows what it's like to be up the front, so he just hasn't quite had the season to show his skills so far. And in third place, a pretty lonely position, currently for Jack Aitken, one of the Williams back drivers. Of course, one back at Monaco, but hasn't had the consistency uh, reliability-wise from the Campos car to show his speed outright either. Now they're coming now and onto the end of this lap. These cars now should be making their way into the pit lane now. Now these lot have gone for the overcut strategy because these ones are always ahead of their teammates anyway. So they thought being up front, they might actually eke out a little bit more tire life. Which although be only one lap different, will give them a big advantage with how quickly the tires go off in Formula 2. Because in a way, these tires, spe specification wise, are pretty much what they had back in 2016, where if you just look at the tires the wrong way, they will just fall apart and degrade, almost like they did back in 2013 at, at Silverton, when tires were just exploding and going off left, right, and centre. There's a gust up there from the ART, from the ART crew, who always been one of the top teams in junior categories, and showing why again here with a good pit stop in Formula 2 now. Although it was a pretty speedy one there from Makino as well, as the. The MP drivers managed to gain a little bit there on Armstrong now. Let's go to Luca Giotto. He's got the undercut. He's got a massive lead now. He's got a commanding lead in terms of Formula 2. Got at least a five, six second gap over these cars behind. If these two start battling now over P2, unless any reliability, uh, any, any reliability issues come in, that pretty much might have just secured the victory there for the Italian, who could become the first repeat winner of the season. Now, a bit further behind, you got Arto Markov there, coming under pressure then for Jack Aiken. And, and then behind him, you got Dan Tatum as well. The rear wing open there on the dam's car. Aiken goes defensive to the inside line. Markov goes even more defensive to the inside line. There's going to be contact between the two of them. And then Markov just somehow manages to come out of that in front of Jack Aiken. Not quite sure how he managed to do that. But he cut himself there just about in front of both of the Brits. Then you've got Gilhame Samaya in the other camp boss. And both camp bosses, halfway through the race, are still going. And that is a feat in itself so far this season. Now then, through the midpoint now, flap seven. Getting here, Djokovic on the back of Jay Hunter Uvla. It's still inside the top 10. 
And now he's going to win again. again back to the places he lost under the uh, the poor pit stop. Now getting here right at the back of the car. He got Roy Nassani inside the top side as well, doing very well. Made up nine places from where he started the race. Now to the final corner, going to go for a move of his line. Look here, it looks about it. But he's got yellow flags and green flags behind. So there's been an incident far at the back, it looks like. As Giotto, we saw there, put up the first half of the race. So Giotto just commanding this race now, got an authoritative lead. And now the Yuki Sonoda's now out of the Grand Prix. Now we've got a Vista, so a full safety car deployed, or is it virtual? I think it might be a full safety car now deployed. That's going to shake things up massively now. And then you feel that's the race left to go. And now they're looking at a replay here of what happened to the Japanese driver. It's following a massive cue car, so it's, it's, there could have been contact here. The, you know how fighty things can get, especially how he's back straight. All the cars jockeying for position, trying to find a little bit of space, trying to make a move from the car in front or defend from the car behind. Looking at the battery, he's moving in again, right on the back of the cue car. Joe really is holding up this cue car, and always an engine failure or something, something's blown there. That Mechachrome engine's crowded enough. And you can pull in there right off the circuit there, and there's something gone massive, gone massively wrong with that at the back of that car. And unfortunately for Snowden, that's him now out of the race with no chance of scoring any points. So now then, that commanding lead that Giotto I was just hyping up, that has completely gone. Enough to build it up now once again. He's had the pace once before. Now, does he have the pace again now? Because everyone will be saving the tyres now. So there's going to be no issues about tyre wear towards the end of this race. You see a few battle scars there on the HWA of Artem Markov. A few more as well there on the, on the side pod of Jack Aitken's Campos. And then we have Dan Tictum in the Dam's car ahead then of Gil Hermes Samaya. And once again, both Camposes, 10 laps or so into the race, are still running. And that is a miracle in itself, like I said earlier on. Because those cars, they usually get about half the race before one of them retires. Although Samaya, it was on for a good result when retired one lap before the end. A couple of races ago, back at the Red Bull Ring at Austria. So they've had a fair show of bad luck in that Campos team so far this season. You've got Robert Schwartzman there, the lead premise still not managed to make as much progress, I'm sure, as what he would be expecting to. We'll be coming up now then to the restart of the Grand Prix. Now, no taking before the start finish line. You can get right behind and get as close as you want. Going to try and run the outside line and try and play a few mind games here with Daruva on the restart. But the, the Indian driver is just going to have uh, the legs down. Instead, one of the thinks about having a little bit to the inside line. It gets very, very close to Connie. Then sending him to the inside line. He got, uh, he's fired up now after that terrible pit stop he had. Almost stalling the car. So it's his own fault. It's the own mistake he made that cost him these positions. But from Giotto just streaking away again. The Italian's got immense pace in that car today so far. They've still got to get though to the finish of the race. We've seen one car go up in smoke already. And there's nothing that Sonoda could have done about that. We've got to hope that the Italian gets it to the end of the race and, and even more so for these, these other two on the podium. I'm pretty sure they're going to resume their podium fight for second place pretty soon. Although you've got Armstrong there pulling away a little bit currently from Tennessee Camichino. Then you've got Markov there in P4 who I think might just be content with how, this, how the past few races have gone. Just to take a P4 finish. Get a little bit of momentum back on his side with that HWA squad. It's a good fortune around here. He's going to want to carry that forward into the remaining few races on the season. The championship fight is still well up to go between the first and at least. Coming into this race, there was about 16 drivers or so mathematically still in the title picture. As we move away now, once again, through the top 10, through Pillar, once again, you've got Dan Tatum there. Still holding up position. Now, everyone seems to be a little bit equidistant now at the moment. And you've got Nassar there, still holding on to a top 10. A very good result so far for the Israeli driver. And you've got Callum Ayla, who currently has stolen the fastest lap of the race so far from Giotto. As we were saying on the formation lap, Ayla's had some pretty good race pace as of late, just hasn't quite had the qualifyings to really maximise the potential of the race pace of that Uni Virtuosi. As it's a purple middle sector there for Djokovic, he's going to find himself side by side now with Jay Hunter Ruvig, almost kind of there. That would have been nasty there, front wing to rear wing, that would have been a puncture and a spin off into the gravel. We've seen a massive crash. I think about 20 years ago between Bertie and Irvine, I think it was, in the Pross and the Jaguar back then through this same centre of the lap. And now they're coming out there into the final centre of the lap. He gets a little bit squirming on the grass, he goes into the back there of Daruva to find his way to the inside line. He's two wheels there on the grass, on the braking. Daruva's still going to hold it. There's a little bit more contact there as Tadasuke Makino now passes with the fast lap of the race. The Japanese driver is coming alive now. These MP cars on the lower fuel, the lighter fuel, are coming alive now at the end of the race. He's got two laps left to go now. And Drogovic now makes his way up. Into P8, so he's only got one place left to gain to get back into where he was. He wants to get ahead of his countryman, Gilhame Samaya. I'm still not convinced we'll make it to the end of the race. But again, I'm not convinced that Jack Aiken currently running in P5 will make it to the end of the race either. If both Camposes explode at the same time, that would be more expected than both of them finishing the race at this point. Of course, there's going to be no DRS here. That won't come into the final lap of the race because after a full safety car restart, the DRS is disabled once again for two laps like it is at the original start of the race. 
to make it away now then. Through the middle sector now. A bit of a hard cut further onto that now. Got some massive pace here for Drogovic. He's caught it like a second or so at least to Gilhame Samaya up in front. We've got we've got essentially four sectors of the race have to go. We've got one lap here of, after this final sector. And it's gonna be all about all, all that straight line pace. We've got a purple once again, middle sector here for the Brazilian, getting on the back of his countrymen. He doesn't look like he quite has the space to keep up with the cars in the front. In that battle for fourth place with Markov, Tictum and Jack Aiken there in the middle. And then through, once again, through this back side of the line. We've got side by side now then. See these two Brazilians once again going side by side. He's breaking a little bit squeezed against onto the grass and he swallows back. He can lose it once again on the breaking. Still side by side now between Samaya and Djokovic. Djokovic, once again, fearless move from the Brazilian. Makes his move now up now into P7. A brilliant move once again from Djokovic. And puts up the fastest lap of the race in the process. He's got a rainbow sector. He's got a red, a purple and a green. So there's some immense pace in these MP cars towards the end of the race. But Luca Guiardo, he's doing just about enough so far. He's still got a hold off this final lap though. We've seen miracles here happen before. Not just in F2, in Formula 1. There were a couple seasons ago, Mick Schumacher won his very first race here in the Haas car. And this is the circuit where his father, Michael Schumacher, also took his first win back in 92. And now the podium battle is still not quite over yet, but Armstrong is just about still within DRS range on the back of Luca Gallo from I think that may about just what holds him on to second place. And you've got Markov still on, just about managing to hold down P4, finds some good pace in that HWA towards the end of the race. Campos may be in a little bit in in a, like, a conservative preserve engine mode because there's no outright engine modes but they may have told the drivers just to hold station now, hold these positions because they need these crucial points in the championship now. Although they, these, these teams don't get any prize money when they finish, obviously the higher the better they do, they will attract better drivers, better staff and potentially even better drivers to their teams now they can bring in more money for the financial future of these teams. Cars may all be specifically similar to specification, but in reality, there's a reason why Primera are usually near the front, and teams like Trident are, are somewhat struggling towards the back. But on their day, as we're seeing today, any team, any driver, they can put in the work, they can get a podium, or even better, maybe even for, even for that race win. I think with high tech, they've come in, they took most of the personnel from Campos, and they're showing why now. We've got one of their drivers once again leading the Grand Prix. Luca Guiardo is so close now to becoming the first repeat winner of this F2 season. And if that doesn't show how close this season has been, seven races in to get a repeat winner, I don't really know what does. We're coming up there then to the finish line now. Got one set left to go, one final chicane to navigate. You've got, you got Armstrong there closing on the braking, it's not quite going to be enough. The power down now for the final time. And look to the finish line, it's going to be Luca Guiardo to win. The Belgian feature race here in Formula 2 become the first repeat winner of the season. And the podium there covered by less than a second. Armstrong and Makino coming like stab brass there at the end of the race. Makino though, that's going to be a very, very happy podium there. For the MP team, who's Djokovic so far, has been carrying the team so far this season. But Makino though, showing the faith they've been putting in by Honda once again. And you've got Djokovic there across the line, I think still in P7. There you see the Eurakali sponsored team once again. Looking very, very happy, with, of course, with the financial backing from Euralkali as well. They've got no worries about their future in Formula 2 and other junior categories. But Luca Giotto, the first repeat winner of the season, standing tall there on top of his high-tech Grand Prix car. And once again, the very small teams that we have in Formula 2, once again, looking very happy there with that result. And then we have Max Gunter, P20. And he managed to make a one place for all that. This really was a weekend to forget for Prima and for Chiruz as well. Now then, out onto the podium there, Giotto once again, looking happy as ever with that race when he knows what that means for his championship, he knows what that means, drawing getting himself towards the race seat now in Formula 2, and now for the champagne! we got Armstrong there as well, the Freiburg driver on the podium, and, and in third place there we have Mikina, so we've got two drivers with backing, Giotto who's doing it all by himself, not part of an academy, but if you keep performances like this, that could change very, very soon. Taking a look at the end results, and Luca Giotto takes the win, half a second clear of Marcus Armstrong, with Tadisuke Makino only a second off the race win, coming home in third. Arsene Marklov with a good result as of late, comes home in P4, ahead of Jack Aiken and Felipe Drogovic, who managed to get past Dan Tatum there towards the end of the race, that was an overtake that we missed. We managed to make a move there on the Brit, we've got Gil Hamas and Mayer coming across the line in P8, with Jay Androvla P9 and Roy Nassani rounding off the top 10. Callum Mylar finishes in P11, and Robert Schwartzman just about manages to, to scrape a point for Prima, coming across the line in 12th. And after becoming the first repeat winner of the season at round 7, Luca Gallo takes the lead of the driver standings, and he's only one point clear of the person who finished second in this race, Marcus Armstrong, 
and Dan takes him. He's always, is that even meant some seems to be coiling down a little bit? After a couple of poor races, he drops down now into P3. He's still only like six points behind, with Flippe Djokovic a further point behind in fourth on 68. I think Artem Markov is still keeping himself in that title picture. Ahead of the other two Russians of Robert Schwarzman and Sergei Sorokin. Callum Marlott's in P8 on 46 points, one point clear of Jehan Drewler, with Giuliano Valesi dropping down into P10. Max Gunter, despite having a few anonymous races, still is the lead Premier. In 11th, with Petro Piquet just about still managing to run off the top 12 for Chiruz on 41 points. And now onto the team standings, and High Tech still in their debut season lead the way, 10 points clear of ART on 125 to 115. And we have HWA still in P3, only 19 points behind. MP now with their best points haul of the season to date so far, get themselves up into 4th place on 96 points, one point, one point clear of Dams who remain in 5th on 95. And they remain a fellow point clear of Prima who are in 6th on 94. The battle for 7th also getting a bit closer with Carlin in 7th place. And the Union Virtuosity dropped down now into P8, one point behind the British outfit. Shrews are looking a little bit anonymous there in 9th place. The gap ahead and the gap behind, with Campos still remaining in 10th place on 52 points. 18 points clear of Trident, who's still bringing up the standings, 11th on 32. So that's been the Belgian feature race here for Formula 2. So meant to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you don't start any future videos. Which will be on a Monday and Friday, definitely. Wednesdays if I can, because I do work full time, so I can't guarantee three videos a week. And select Saturdays, as you've seen here, for Formula 1 and Formula 2. If you give me a follow on Twitter Instagram, there'll be updates to when videos are released, updates to make in general, and just anything else I feel like I need to post about as well. So if you give me a follow on there, that'll be much appreciated. The link to description down below, along with the link to the wiki for my Formula 1 series, which is basically fandom Wikipedia, which I've made for each season, each driver, each series. So there's about 80-ish pages or so. And it's been a lot of work to do that, and it's collectively still a lot of work as the seasons go on and progress to update each time after each event. I'd appreciate it if you, can, if you could go and give that a read, because there might even be a sneak peek in the future, pretty soon maybe, as what's to come up in the next season in the Formula 1 series in 2022. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.